Gentlemen, amazing beards, even patchy, crappy ones like the one I'm just kidding. Gentlemen, today we're talking about beards. If you are ready to up your game and look like you're wearing sex on your face, why don't you drop me one of these to be like, yo, Alpha, I'm gonna wear sex on my face. Beards aren't grown, they're built. Building a beard is much like raising a kid. You can't just like let it go or else he's gonna start doing drugs and hanging out with that nasty slut Brenda. Your beard is very similar. If you don't nurture it and love it and teach it right from wrong, it's going to be running around banging sluts like Brenda. So today, gentlemen, in an attempt to help your beard not bang sluts like Brenda, I'm going over seven grooming rules all men should follow. Women have makeup. You can take a totally less than average woman and put her in a nice set of smoky eyes, maybe some lashes, some red lips, gentlemen, some nice foundation, and she goes from like a three to like an eight and a half. Beards are the male equivalent to makeup. You can take a totally average looking guy. Hey, throw a beard on him and all of a sudden he is slaying it with the senoritas. But it all starts with the first beard growing rule. Let it grow. Let it all grow, gentlemen. Don't shave it. Don't trim it. Don't do anything for 30 days. We need to know what the potential of your follicle facial formation actually is. One of the mistakes that a lot of guys make is that they'll let it start to grow and then they see that there are some bald spots or patchy areas and they freak out and they shave because they're so paranoid about looking patchy. For me, the three week mark is when I started to really notice the biggest difference. Like up until three weeks, I was seeing a lot of holes, a lot of patchiness, but at three weeks it was like, okay, I can get used to this. My beard is better than I thought it was. Rule number one is let it grow for four weeks with the exception of the boundaries, which actually brings us to the second rule. Gentlemen, you gotta clean up your boundaries. Cheeks and neck. Shave your cheek and your neck. Gentlemen, there are a few reasons for this. Reason number one is that as your beard starts to grow, you're gonna get some like straggly, like rogue hairs up high higher on your cheek. And by eliminating it, it actually makes the boundary more defined and your beard look thicker. And neck beards are a no-no for most guys. In my opinion, guys, you gotta keep the boundaries edged up and clean. Now the question is, where are the boundaries? Which brings us to the third rule. In my opinion, the more natural you can keep your beard shape in terms of its natural growth pattern, as opposed to like edging it up and making all sorts of crazy designs, the better you're gonna look and the easier it is to maintain. To determine where your beard should start and stop on your cheek I want you to get something straight like a comb all right you're gonna put it at the top of your ear and run it to the corner of your mouth and you're gonna shave anything above and leave anything below now let's talk about the neck which is the biggest issue that I see a lot of guys making they are trimming their neck totally wrong so head straight finger boom right there you're leaving everything above shaving everything below one of my biggest pet peeves is when I see a dude and he's shaving up into this area and what happens it makes him look like he has a double chin. One of the best things about beards is that it has the ability to make your jaw and your chin look stronger and more structured but when you remove all the hair underneath there all that fat all that meat all that double chin action is just hanging out. Gentlemen say no to neck fat. The fourth beard grooming rule all men should follow is invest in an amazing grooming tool. Not good. Not Okay, amazing. Gentlemen, you get what you pay for when it comes to grooming tools. And if you're looking to upgrade your beard's grooming tool game, gentlemen, you have got to hit that link down below and check out today's video sponsor, Brio, who happens to be the best grooming tool on the planet, period. Drop the Brio. Brio Beardscape is the best grooming tool in the history of beards. Gentlemen, I did a video where I compared my previous favorite, the Norelco, to the Brio. It was unsponsored unpaid. It was a side-by-side -side comparison to show you why the Brio kicks the out of Norelco. I'll link to that video down below, but in a nutshell, the deal is this. Brio is the best product on the market, period. It even comes close to the Brio. Gentlemen, the battery life on this thing is insane. The cutting power, right, it's ridiculous. Ceramic blade, titanium rake, you've got all sorts of micro adjustments. It comes with a bunch of different attachments. Gentlemen, this thing is amazing. If you've got a beard, if you've got body hair, going to have a beard in the future, gentlemen, you have got to treat yourself and your beard 
catered to the best, and Brio is the best. Guys, there's a link down below to our custom Brio Beardscape landing page. Because I'm friends with the owner, Eric of Brio, I'm like, yo, Eric, you gotta hook the gentleman up. And gentlemen, he has not only hooked it up, he has like, it's, it's, I don't know how, honestly. I don't know how he sells this product for the price that he does. But guys, the Brio Beardscape is cheaper than you're gonna find any of these other subpar shitty beard grooming tools that tug, that break, that suck. Gentlemen, hit that link down below and go grab a Brio while supplies last. Guys, they always sell out. Every single time I do a promotion, they sell out like super fast because this thing is ridiculous. And the price he's giving it to you for, insane. The fifth beard grooming rule that all men should follow is you've got to moisturize and condition your beard. The main reason is not only to make your beard softer, supple, and more kissably soft when you're with your spicy senorita, it is also to eliminate chin flakes. Chin flakes. Gentlemen, there's nothing like looking down at your shirt and having a bunch of chin dandruff on your super sexy black shirt. How are you going to eliminate it? Really, you have two different options. One is a beard oil. The other one is a beard bomb. I used to think beard oils were like total bullshit, right? And then I got one, I started using it, I'm like, my God, my beard's softer, it's shinier. The way that you use it, guys, you get a beard oil, ready? One, two, three drops in your hand, and then right here on your beard. Smooth it on and when you're using it make sure to get it and work it in to the chin area because the chin is where all the dandruff flakes actually hang out. Now, if you want something that's going to work very similar in terms of hydration, but it's gonna give you a little more hold, a little more styling power, you definitely should check out a beard bomb. Beard bombs are typically a little bit harder, right? You're gonna take a little bit in your finger like that, you're gonna put it in your palm and you are going to emulsify it, just like you do hair product, all right? Once it's warm, it dissolves, and then you're going to also put it in your beard. Beard bombs are a little bit heavier than the oil and allow for more styling. Now, this actually brings us to the sixth beard rule. You gotta learn to brush your beard. A Boar's Bristle brush is an amazing addition to your grooming and bearded arsenal. Gentlemen, if you're growing a beard, you need one of these, even if it's not gonna be super long. And the reason is because every day, what I want you to do is start to brush your beard and train it to grow in the direction you want. If you're patchy, one of the greatest things you can do is actually camouflage it by brushing the longer hairs and sort of hiding the patchy bald areas. Now, the other thing that brushing does, it stimulates follicle growth, which brings us to the seventh beard grooming rule that all men should follow, which is be honest with your follicle formation. If your beard is super thin or super patchy, gentlemen, after four weeks, I would recommend definitely keeping it trim, keeping it short, honest with their facial hair, and they grow the best beard they possibly can. Now, here is the other reality. As you age, your beard is going to get better. A lot of times, beard and facial hair growth is very closely tied to testosterone. When I was younger, Patch Adams in my 20s and 30s, and it wasn't until I hit my 40s that my facial hair really started to fill in a little bit. So the good news is that right now, if you're like, yo, Alpha, I'm pissed because my beard sucks balls, give it a little time because as you age, it gets better. But at the end of the day, sometimes it's just not in the genetic cards. But word on the street is that next year, clean shaven is like the new beard, so you're good.